Hello once again, you are welcome to my YouTube channel, Queen Rami Talks. Guys, thank you so much for all the love that we are receiving on this channel. It's so amazing to watch. I know this is our opening line, but guys, it works. It works. <laughs> and welcome, welcome to our VIPs, our new subscribers. Please stay tuned, hit on that notification bell, and please make sure you like and share and comment on our videos. To our retaining subbies, our homies, our VIPs, guys, thank you so much for the love. Our comment section, there's so much traffic. Thank you for liking all our videos. And even our old videos, the views are growing every day. Guys, thank you. It's so, so amazing. Okay, and to those who are watching without subscribing, what's the problem? Please hit on that subscribe button. You won't regret this channel. Anyway, guys, as you saw on the title of the video, it's a story time today. And of course, Siapuza. Make sure you get your drink because your girl almost settled and got married to the wrong person and i'm not here to describe a wrong person i'm here to describe uh, to to explain what happened to me and how i almost fell into the trap so as you are aware my story times are in no means trying to ruin anybody's reputation this is for the people who know um, the person that I'll be talking about and obviously I won't be mentioning anybody's name. I won't be mentioning any location So it could it can be anyone actually. So yeah, I'm not here to ruin people's reputations or characters or whatever I'm just here to tell my life story Okay, um, I didn't even think about the name of the guy <laughs> Yo, okay, we're gonna call the guy a uh, Solomon. Yo, <laughs> okay, we're gonna call the guy Solomon. Um, so, okay, this is me. Like I did say, guys, I've been preaching when I was still young. I was preaching, go, being invited to places to minister. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, as he is my personal savior. Okay, so I went to this place. My friend invited me to their church. I remember it was a youth service. So she invited me to come and minister um, on two occasions, Friday night and even Saturday. Okay, fine. Uh, Friday night we ministered. Everything was perfect. Then Saturday night it was um, a bit of preaching and then music festival also. So, yeah. Hi, before I could minister on Saturday, um, you know when you are about to start, you prefer for the word to be read. And then after the word is read, and then you, you pray, then start to minister. So um, at that time, Solomon was in the, at the church, but I didn't know him at all. So while I was busy, um, the word was being read. For the time of prayer, I called Solomon. He was close by. So I was like, um, man of God, can you please pray for the word? Okay. I God showed up on that night. It was a very powerful night. Like everything went perfect. So after the service, you know, um, as preachers, we go into a certain office, you know, to drink coffee or your cold drink there. <laughs> Levels. <laughs> Okay, as we are in the office, how? Brother Solomon comes. Oh, woman of God. God is using you mightily, you know. Can I get to know you? I'm like, no, there's no problem, man of God, you know. As a child of God, I mean, it's very important to be a nice person, you know, to show love. Can't I, brother Solomon? I, we are far. Like, yo, brother Solomon was touched. Which is coming to my point of saying that when God is using you mightily, the glory goes back to God, you know? There's still me who is not on the pulpit. So if a person falls in love with the person who is a wo powerful worshiper, a person who is a powerful preacher, you don't know the real me, 
you know because there is queen rami behind all those so what i figured with solomon he just was um in love with what he saw the lord using or doing in my life okay that's my opinion anyway okay hi solomon okay my friends were like yo i the man of god i is in love i didn't take it serious we exchanged numbers all the pastors all the people who were there in that office we exchanged numbers you know it was beautiful okay hi life goes on hi no i'm in polokwani i'm back home yo i get a call hi solomon calls hey woman of god did you arrive safe um i just wanted you to tell you that you are really powerful you know there's something about you <laughs> By the way, is that how brothers in the church shell? I <laughs> because clearly my husband didn't shell on me like that, and he's he's a man of God. Okay, anyway, hi Solomon. Solomon was like, no, I can't hide behind the bush anymore. At that time, I was single, so Solomon was like, you know what, man of God, I really want to be with you. Like it's it's beyond the pulpit now. Um, the person that you are, you are so what what, you know. I the brother Shellad. So, which is something that I want us as children of God to analyze. Just because someone is a church, it doesn't mean they're your soulmate. Just because you met someone worshiping so powerful, it doesn't mean they are your soulmate. Some of us, let me include myself we will not and have not met our life partners at church and that's okay you don't have to meet them at church you know even there at the mall when you're walking around you could meet the love of your life and does it mean that they are not um godly enough for you to marry them it doesn't mean that okay fine so me and solomon got to know each other um excuse me as we got to know each other a part of me knew from the onset that solomon is not what i want in life partner you know i knew and i i, I knew and but i was like you know what if this is the will of god let it prevail which is something that we get wrong when it comes to a life partner yes it's important thoroughly important to inquire of the lord to check with God if this is exactly what is needed but you have a choice you have the power to make a choice so that tomorrow when things backfire you don't go back to God and say but God you gave me this person ah what 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 can I do now Ooh, no no you make a choice as a lady in the church you agree and say yes to a man it's your choice this thing of um, God will whisper in your ear at night and say, My child, that one is your husband. Ah. <laughs> I beg to differ. It does not work like that. Okay. So as me and <clears throat> Solomon were knowing each other, Okay, he invited me to come over again, back to the place where I went to minister. So I didn't know the place very well. So when I went there, I remember I've never been in a setup with um, Solomon. Hey, Solomon, he even calls me. Ah, <laughs> you're sorry, guys. It's like, <laughs> I almost said the name of the place, yo. <laughs> So Solomon was doing these funny things. Okay, first impression last, guys. First impression last in, in, a, in every setup, whether it's work, whether it's relationships, whether it's first date, first impression last. Uh -uh, I went there. I'm all dressed up, you know. You know, when I get there, Solomon, sure. I don't know what he was busy with during the day, but yeah. He never got a chance to freshen up. I, I just overlooked such things. I was like, I, this man is busy. He's working, you know. But he didn't look the part. I was like, okay, it's fine. You know, the way Solomon was so crazy, he was like, yeah, I've never seen such a beautiful woman. <laughs> I've never seen such a beautiful woman. I feel like climbing the whole house. 
and the whole the whole mall of this place and tell people how much I love you. Okay, for someone, yeah, it might be a beautiful gesture, you know, but for me, that was a total turn off. You know, how do you want to climb a, a, a house and tell people that you love me? I mean, you have to show me that you love me, you know? Okay, fine. The way Solomon was so happy, you know, Solomon, Pella, he saw a wife. Solomon wants to settle down, which brings me to my point now of saying, when you meet a partner, when you meet a person, it's not about whether they have money to marry you. It's about whether even as they have money to marry you, are they the right person for you? You know, because sometimes um, you will meet a person in two weeks and then they have money to pay your lobola and then you're like, this is the one. No, it's not always the case, you know. So Solomon was ready, you know, we were already like, searching for venues for the place where we're supposed to marry the way solomon was so excited he went and introduced me to every mother in you know what in in his neighborhood you know what it was total bliss and i, I liked what he was doing it was beautiful to watch i mean it showed me that when a man knows what he wants he will act you know which brings me to this point, ladies. Men know what they want. You know? Men will do anything to make themselves happy. You know? That's why a man doesn't mind dating a woman for 10 years without marrying her. And then meet Rosina in three months. He sends the uncles to Rosina's home. That shows you that men know what they want. So why are you still stuck and finding yourself in a setup where you are not happy, they are cheating on you, you know, that they are not even seeing your value, but you are still stuck there? It's because you don't know your worth. Men know their worth, you know? Anyway, I hope you got that point. Okay, you know what? So now it's time for us to, to go to the venue of our wedding, you know? All those kind of stuff Eesh. then it clicked in me that you know what i don't want to be with this guy i don't love this guy you know yes the bible says husbands love your wives and wives you must submit to your husbands you know we were never told to love a man but a woman responds to a man's love Basically, men love, and then we women, we respond to the love they are giving us. So if you see us flaunting our husbands, if you see us loving our men publicly, it's, it's the love that we are getting from them. It's how they are publicly, sorry, publicly, oh gosh, publicly um, expressing how much they love and care about us. So we are responding, we are responding rather, oh, slumbu. <laughs> we are responding to that and when we respond to that we submit and honor and appreciate our partners so i knew i so i didn't know how to tell this um solomon that you know what this cannot work for me but i approached the mothers the the ones that he introduced me to we began to to be close i started asking um, Solomon is lacking one, two, three. I won't mention these things because, hey, there were so much. I went to the mother. Um, Solomon is lacking this and this. How, how do I rectify it before we get married? Because I know this in the long run, it will affect me. I don't want to find myself with a man that is not doing one, two, three. And I'm not talking about material things. Guys, materials are important. We need cars. We need houses. We need money. We need money for Brazilian hair. We need everything. But character plays an important role to make a marriage work. You know, that's what I've seen in relationships that we've been in. Your character is the one that will determine whether you and that man will stay longer or not. It's either your characters will clash. It's either the one will be higher than the other. But you need to make sure that you connect way beyond material things. Because imagine if um, you, you marry someone because of their position at church. It's lockdown. Churches are closed. <laughs> imagine. 
imagine marrying someone because and they're a director in this company rather marry someone who's a director at their own company no one will fire them ah come on now oh God. no one will fire that person now ah <laughs> so rather marry somebody um for the right reasons you know don't marry somebody because they are a director at that company what if they get retrenched tomorrow you know don't marry somebody for for the things that you you can touch tangible things are vanity they will vanish one or the other imagine marrying somebody because they stay in a beautiful house tomorrow the house bends down you are a miserable person because you were there for those things now they are gone you know check check marry somebody so that even if those things they they are not there any longer you stay you know I remember watching a date my family episode and um, the husband of that lady got into an accident and stayed on a wheelchair and then the wife went to the family and said I cannot I cannot live my life with this man if he is like this now uh -uh. you see her motives were revealed at the end of the day so for me it was not a matter of the guy has money the uh, Solomon is ready it had a lot to do with how we are going to stay together in our place i remember um solomon was given a house you know he was like here are the keys you know uh, come my wife you are ready you know this is your house <laughs> can't you know it's, guys i don't mind such things but we need to be sure that we are compatible we need to be sure that you know what we can hold a conversation a solid one you know, we need to be sure that, you know, I'm, I'm, you will be my children's father one day. If God permits, of course, you will be my children's father. What are you going to tell my kids? Can you, can you, can you teach my kids manners? Can you, you know what? Men also, it's not your beauty that is going, the beauty of your woman that is going to raise your children. It's her character traits. It's how she handles herself, you know? So, so it, it's, I'm not saying go there and accept a proposal from guys who are not your ideal partners. No, but don't, don't just marry for looks. Don't, don't just be charmed and then go to, to home affairs and sign on. Hey, okay. You will, you will cry. Uh -uh. You see why the, the, the rate of divorce is so high because sometimes we marry for looks. You know, you see me there walking at the mall with my body that I'm doing squats on. And then you think, wow, I've arrived. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, guys, but it's very, very important to settle down for the right reasons. So I realized for me that Solomon is indeed not what I need. And, and I think the hardest part for me was making it known. Also to the mothers, I mean, I only went to the mothers just to tell them that, you know what, I'm not happy with Solomon, you know, and yeah, but to, to say it straight that um, I can't be with him, yeah, I said it after a while, with my actions, with words, but Solomon couldn't take it, but wherever you are, Solomon, I wish you all the best, as you know now, I'm a wife, <laughs> to a very wonderful man, a man of God, yes, amen. Okay, guys, anyway, that's my story with Solomon. I'm going to cut it here. Yeah, I hope all the lessons that I'm, I was bringing in between um, people have learned, you know. People have learned that like, it's not really about what a person has. It's about who they are, you know. Who a person is, is what you are going to stay with in the house. Imagine had I pleased those mothers and married that guy. Who was going to be kissing that man in the house? It's me now. Uh-uh. Who must wake up with the, with the smell of that man's mouth in the morning? Me. So don't do things to please people. Even the pressure that we have in the church about marriage, don't. It, the pressure or um, the pain of waiting upon the Lord, it's not even pain, of waiting upon the Lord for your life partner is better than the pain of marrying the wrong person. Singing ladies know that. Okay, let me do my shout-outs. Did you get that, ladies? It's not painful to be single. Okay, I know people will say, you're only saying that because, yeah, you, you've got a man now, you've settled. 
I'm telling you, it's better to wait long than marry wrong. Imagine waking up with someone you don't like every day of your life. And those mothers, they will be happy out there with their husbands. Yeah. Anyway, ah, let's do some shout outs. Okay, I want to say holla holla to my woman Hopi. Wow, you are commenting on every video. Thank you so much, my love. You see why I invited you to my Lobola day. You are the one. You are the one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Please don't get tired. Continue to comment, like, and share. And then uh, to the notification gang, Madam To Me Jess, guys, she's got a YouTube channel. Go there and subscribe. She's so beautiful. You know, one thing I've noticed about YouTube, there's a whole lot of beautiful women on this platform. Like, yo, yo, we're killing it, ladies. Um, Mr. Simon, thank you so much. You are commenting. I don't even know you personally, but you are doing the most. Thank you so much. And um Nompumele Lompumi, I don't know in person, but I appreciate the love. Thank you. Uh, no, Michelle, my girl, she also has a YouTube channel. Check it out, guys. Bona, let's grow, let's grow, let's support a black child to rise above mediocrity. And lastly, but not least, uh, Madam Lilo Max, I love you guys so much. You guys are the best. I appreciate all the love. Don't forget to subscribe, hit on that notification bell, and comment on our videos. Until we meet again, I'm bringing content. As you guys can see, I'm doing this. I'm bringing more videos more often. Guys.